I, I think it's time to go to the Kentucky Derby. I'm in like mild panic mode. What a day, what a day. So I was just scrolling through Instagram and then I saw this reel where Miss America and Miss America's Outstanding Teen were picking out dresses for the Kentucky Derby. And I was like, that's confusing. That was last month. Ends up it's tomorrow and I am currently in Kentucky, but I am in Franklin, Kentucky down here. I was just in Lowellville, Kentucky where the Kentucky Derby happens. And apparently we're gonna drive all the way back and make this happen. We're about to go on an adventure, guys, because we're also changing time zones, so I'm about to lose an hour. We have a lot to do. Um, we better start driving. <laughs> so there is one stop we actually have to make on our way back to Lowellville. Apparently it's Lowellville and not Louisville, as the locals have told me, has it, have informed me. But also, Louisville Slugger, I mean, I don't know, but apparently according to the locals, I've learned it is Lowellville. So, Tell me your opinions. Do we think it's Louisville or Louisville? Do we ignore the locals and just do what we know is right? I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, despite being in a rush, this was one stop I could not skip before I leave Franklin, Kentucky. Something that has been set in motion since 2019. A masterpiece in creation because today I am finishing my cutlery road trip collection. From the spoon in Minneapolis, Minnesota to the fork in New York State and now the giant knife in Franklin, Kentucky. There was no reason for this to be so important to me, but it was. And I loved that it came with a little extra exploration and fun art alongside of it. And of course, when you see a giant truck like this one, what else is there to do but play a game of limbo? All right, let's get back on the road. All right, guys, you know our mission. We're making a headpiece for the Kentucky Derby. We're at Michael's. Let's go. When I walked into Michael's, I had no game plan, just a color scheme in mind based on the fact that I only owned one appropriate dress for a derby. Also, I used to be a fashion designer. I went to school for it, and I think a big inspiration for me with my headpiece is the clothing line I did centered around flowers and nature and color for the Crayola Factory fashion show. So now that I have everything I need for the derby tomorrow, I'm heading to Planet Fitness to take a shower, which is usually a nice relaxing night. But the thing about living in a van and traveling to different Planet Fitnesses is, well, there's a few things. One is it's so embarrassing when you walk in and you have to look around for where to scan because you have no idea because everything is new. But it's also a game of shower Russian roulette. And today I did not get an empty barrel. I got a freezing cold shower with little to no water pressure. I love long hot showers, which is a big reason I opted not to put a shower in my van so because I knew I would just be refilling water constantly. But this is a price I pay for my love of that luxury. That was one of my least favorite showers I've ever taken at a Planet Fitness. That was so bad. So I am going to be sleeping at Cracker Barrel, which is about eight minutes away. And then at about 7 a.m., hopefully I'll get some Cracker Barrel. And then at 8 a.m., Hopefully I'll be able to park at the nearby, I think it's Cardinal Stadium. Is that who plays in Louisville? Louisville? Oh my goodness, Louisville? I forgot already. <laughs> Dressed right now, so we're gonna start working on that.
was my only option. So is missing the most important piece right now, the headpiece. So we're going to work on that right now. All right. So this is what we have to work with. Um, I really like the color scheme. We're just going to try to throw it up in my hair and see what happens. There's no rules to creating things. So that's what I'm living by today. <laughs> I'm ready. I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but I kind of did like the idea of like draping one over my head like that. These throughout. Oh, look how cute they are. <laughs> I think it's time to go to the Kentucky Derby. I am just going to open my fan and keep it running while I'm gone because it really doesn't pull that much energy and it's gonna be really hot when I get back here. So, worth it. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm just like looking at all the outfits and mm, as a girl who loves fashion, I am in the right place. <laughs> I'm also a little nervous. Um, it just seems a little huge and overwhelming, but let's go. <laughs> All right, let's play a game called Find Tori's Mistake that makes me have to turn around and come back to the van in just a few moments. I forgot to change my shoes. <laughs> And this is not the first time. I this happens way too much. I Lovely. What happens when you live in a van is you just get so used and just so comfortable in your van that when you leave, you just still feel like you're home everywhere. And that's how you forget to change your shoes before you go somewhere important. The excitement quickly wore off when I scanned my ticket and it turned red. Ends up I bought a ticket for yesterday's show, not today, and the first three people I talked to all told me there was nothing I could do but buy another $80 ticket. I'm in like mild panic mode. I don't like I don't have another $80 to drop on a ticket. accidentally bought a ticket for yesterday and when I went to go scan in it didn't scan right because scanning for yesterday not today is there anything I can do to be able to use that ticket today okay pull up the account thank you I appreciate it you're probably thinking, wow, so great, they figured it out. But honestly, they told me they would message Ticketmaster to refund me and I just needed to buy a new ticket and they would sort it out. But they wrote my info on a sticky note and as I walked away, I realized there is nothing I have to keep them accountable. And if they don't follow their end of the deal, there is nothing I can do and I just double paid. But at that point, there was literally nothing I could do anyway about it. So I decided to just enjoy my day and soak in the energy and the excitement of entering Churchill Downs. Welcome to the infield. It's probably not what you see in most photos of the Kentucky Derby because this is not the spot where all the rich people sit at their fancy tables and booths making bets. This is where the party really gets interesting. The infield sports a little bit of everyone and is known to get a little crazy and wild, but also there's no real view of the track here. So people literally camp out in front of the bathrooms if it's a good view of the big screens. The views are so minimal. Apparently this photographer felt the need to photograph the porta potties. So maybe I should have started earlier with a question you may have. What is the Kentucky Derby? It is the most watched and most attended horse race in the United States, and also the biggest annual event in Kentucky. It's often called the most exciting two minutes in sports and is the oldest continuously held major sporting event in the US. And it's preceded by a two week long Kentucky Derby Festival, which if you watch my other videos, you may know I accidentally woke up in my camper van in the middle of it last week because as I slept, they set it up all around me. And I was thinking it was the end of the Kentucky Derby celebration, not a kickoff. Wait a minute, we need to play another game. It's called Guess the price of a pizza at the Kentucky Derby. Did you guess $55? Well, if you did, you're insane. 
which is totally fine because I apparently am too. Somehow I rationalized paying $8 for a waffle cone, but you know, when in Rome. At this point in the day, I was honestly starting to feel a little overwhelmed by all the big crowds. So I went to find a place to sit, relax, and recharge my phone using my solar powered battery charger. So while we wait, here are the top five outfits and hats I have seen so far at the Derby, starting with some special honorable mentions. Starting with this guy, because I don't know what's going on and I genuinely appreciate that. And on the flip side, Miss America and Miss USA were both here and I didn't get to meet either of them because they were both on the booty side of the track, but I did spot a Miss America sparkly hat on the infield, which made my day. All right, so coming in at number five is this eccentric yellow ensemble. Number four is this adorable couple who made Beetlejuice couture fashion. I just love it. Number three, this woman who just went all out to the point of which she couldn't even walk without holding her hat up. Number two actually goes to a very simplistic hat because I really liked it and I think this is what I would want to wear if I came back to the Derby another year. And number one is a tie between this iconic Pokemon suit because y'all know I love Pokemon and this woman because at the end of the day, walking in a thunder storm all that mattered was practicality and i too wished i had a chair hat but at the end end of the day even this guy could take first place because in the infield and in fashion it all is about breaking the rules right it was at this point that I began to realize I was missing something in my Kentucky Derby experience as I watched brothers cheer and jump and cry and laugh and join together in camaraderie over the sport. And how could I join this experience without having to go out of my introverted comfort zone and talk to strangers? Well, I could raise my stakes in the game a little. Well, I'm not really one who does gambling or betting on things. But I'm starting to realize that is half of the fun of being here. So we are about to get in line. I don't know how to make bets or what I'm going to bet on, but we'll figure it out. I ended up waiting in this line for about an hour because the machine in my line was broken and there was no communication about that, but it was fine because I had a lot to learn and figure out, which an hour was apparently still not enough for that because I thought race 14 was the big race because of course the last race of the day would be the biggest, right? But no, it was race 12, and I didn't realize that until after race 12 was finished when everyone packed up and left. Hi. Um, can I ask you a question for race 14? For $2? So I'm officially $2 poorer. Poorer is poorer work. But um, I don't even know how you win or what you win, but the stakes are higher now. So the race I bet on hasn't started yet, but it's starting to rain and it's just not worth sitting in the rain for me. I've been here all day. So we're gonna try to get back to the van. We still have a very long one. So that's it folks, we have successfully Kentucky Derbied. You are probably wondering, did I win anything on that last race? I have no idea, but I will tell you my secret to choosing which horse to bet on was because the color they labeled the horse as was maroon and that is a Taylor Swift song. So it felt like a valid reason to choose and to bet on her. So that, that's all it really takes for me.
So the rain turned into a hailstorm and then something hit me in like the eye and I could only see from one eye. And so I was like walking like with my purse, like trying to keep it closed, like <laughs> through the crowd of people. And my hand was too wet to like really fix anything. Also I'm wearing makeup, was wearing makeup. Um, and <laughs> it just, I honestly, it came to a point where like I was looking at the sunset and it was so pretty and I just started laughing. It was like, all right, I am starving. I could not afford any of that food. <laughs> what a day. Let's try this again, shall we? <sighs> Much better.